in olden times people did not have technology available with them that means the only tool for space observation for them was their naked eyes that means certain conclusions that they made were not correct one such conclusion was that they thought that everything revolves around the earth and we know for sure that is not the case so there was a person named as nicholas copernicus so his name is nicholas copernicus he told everybody that no everything does not revolve around the earth everything revolves around the sun and whenever everything revolves around the sun it revolves in a circular orbit and whenever it revolves in a circular orbit it revolves with a constant velocity okay but later on after some time there was a person named as johannes kepler so johannes kepler said that i agree to you when you said that everything revolves around the sun but i don't agree to the fact that everything revolves around in a circular orbit with a constant velocity but how did johannes kepler tell us that no it does not revolve in a circular orbit and the velocity is also not constant to understand that we'll have to understand kepler's laws of planetary motion so let's start with kepler's first law so for the first law kepler took sun as the reference point and he took a planet and he started observing so one thing we know for sure is that kepler was a very good observer whenever he used to observe something he used to note it down on the diagram that means he used to draw diagrams for those observations so what he did was he started observing a planet let's say for example mars he started observing for a particular period of time and he kept the time fixed let's say he kept the time one day he started observing and he saw that the planet covered certain amount of distance in that one day next one day the planet covered another distance the other day the distance was not the same and the other day as well the distance traveled by the planet was not the same so he started plotting all the points and the moment he completed the observation he was surprised that the orbit that the planet took around the sun was not a circular orbit it was an elliptical orbit so that is where he formulated the first law he said the orbit of a planet is an ellipse with sun at one of the foci now you would have understood the first part that is the orbit of a planet is an ellipse but when it says with the sun at one of the foci now what do you mean by this term foci let's try to understand that if we have a circle with us how many centers does a circle have you would tell me one right that one center we can call it as a focus right but as soon as i stretch the circle you would see the shape changes and now it has two centers so one was called as focus more than one is called as a foci so they are called as foci now when we have sun the sun can be on either one of the foci it is not going to change its position right so sun is at any one of the foci so this completes the first law that is the orbit of a planet is an ellipse with sun at one of the foci so this is kepler's first law now after completing the first law he had this diagram ready with him after looking at the diagram he started to do something with the diagram and again he came up with certain conclusions what he did was he took the planet he took the center of the sun now when he took the planet he drew a straight line between the planet and the sun so what is this line the line joining the planet and the sun remember this the line joining the planet and the sun now obviously when this planet will move from point f to point e this particular line is going to sweep certain amount of area right remember this this line joining the planet and the sun is sweeping certain amount of area right so now we know that the time interval is fixed that is one day similarly from point d to point c it is going to cover certain amount of area again from point b to point a it is going to sweep certain amount of area so now you can see that it has swept certain amount of areas 
in fixed intervals of time so we can say equal intervals of time so now after looking at these three areas we can say that these are nothing but sectors right but for ease of understanding let us consider them as triangles so now we have three triangles and as of now you cannot see any similarity between these three triangles but when you actually look at the areas of these three triangles all the three areas would be the same would be equal that means if you try to accommodate one triangle into the other it would easily get accommodated and this is how he came to know that the line joining the planet and the sun sweeps equal areas in equal intervals of time so this is what is the second kepler's law that is the line joining the planet and the sun sweeps equal areas in equal intervals of time so this is kepler's second law now moving on to the third law again for third law he took the sun and the planets but this time right now we are looking at the sun from the top this is the top view of the sun so let us say we have two planets over here mercury and venus obviously when we consider mercury it would have certain amount of distance from the center of the sun right let us consider that distance to be small r because we know in this chapter that the distance between the centers can be denoted by small letter d or small letter r but we know for a fact that the orbit is not circular it is an elliptical orbit right so what we are going to consider is this r to be the mean distance of the planet from the sun what is it mean distance of the planet from the sun memorize this this is you can say a trick to remember kepler's third law so what is small r mean distance of the planet from the sun say this to yourself five times mean distance of the planet from the sun now we know that this planet is going to revolve around the sun and for this revolution around the sun it is going to take certain amount of time let us denote that time with capital t so what is capital t capital t is the period of revolution around the sun what is capital t period of revolution around the sun right so memorize this so what is small r mean distance of the planet from the sun what is capital t period of revolution around the sun right just memorize this and you would be amazed to know that 80 to 90 percent of kepler's third law is already done is already memorized now we know for a fact that this planet is at a greater distance than the first planet that means here the value for r is going to be more that means r is increasing so now we can see that r increases but tell me one thing since the distance is more is it going to take more time to revolve around the sun or less time to revolve around the sun obviously more time right so when r increases we know that t also increases now between these two terms that is r and t kepler came up with a relation he did all the calculations all the necessary calculations which is not there in our portion right now so after doing the calculations he came with a conclusion that t square is directly proportional to r cube that means the square of the period of revolution is directly proportional to the cube of the mean distance of the planet from the sun let's see the statement after some time but first of all we know that t square is proportional to r cube but we know for a fact that whenever two things are directly proportional to each other their ratio is a constant right that means the ratio of these two that is t square upon r cube will be what will be nothing but constant so this is the formula for kepler's third law which is going to be important for numericals as well so t square upon r cube is equal to k that is the constant now again we know a trick to remember kepler's third law what we have to focus is we have to focus on the relation that is t square is proportional to r cube so first of all what is capital t it is the period of revolution around the sun what is small r it is the mean distance of the planet from the sun 
so there you can see it is square right so the square of the period of revolution around the sun that is the statement the square of the period of revolution around the sun what is that symbol it is directly proportional so it is directly proportional to what to the cube of the mean distance of the planet from the sun so that is what we are supposed to write to the cube of the mean distance of the planet from the sun so what is the third statement the square of the period of revolution around the sun is directly proportional to the cube of the mean distance of the planet from the sun so this was kepler's third law and i hope that you are able to remember the kepler's third law now since we are done with all the three laws let us quickly revise with all the three laws what was the first law the orbit of a planet is an ellipse with the sun at one of the foci what was the second law the line joining the planet and the sun sweeps equal areas in equal intervals of time and the third law is the square of the period of revolution around the sun is directly proportional to the cube of the mean distance of the planet from the sun so this completes all the three laws of kepler hope you have understood and also you were able to remember them and yes please do not forget to like share subscribe and press the bell icon